Yeah, feel free to ask questions or if you're unsure or confused or anything, don't be afraid to speak up. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. So um, just getting started, I'll kind of explain the photo reference. This is a um, location. This is Northern California, just east of Sacramento. And I kind of cut my teeth painting in this location, on location in this general area. And it's geographically, it's technically, it's the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountain range. So as you're driving, if you're familiar with um, the geography of California of the state, if you're driving east from Sacramento, eventually you'll hit Lake Tahoe, which is on the border of California and Nevada. And it's a big destination for a lot of the people that live in the Bay Area, San Francisco and Oakland, as well as in the Valley in Sacramento. So there's a lot of people up that way. But anyway, I, I lived in this area for a couple of years and painted a lot on location. And so I got used to painting the hills with, you know, people call them golden hills, but they're just brown. <laughs> There's nothing golden about them. In this in the winter time, they're green and lush and beautiful and and looks great. But then, you know, as soon as it starts to warm up a little bit, then they become brown and then just kind of gross. Except for, you know, as the sun starts to set, we all I'm sure are familiar with this idea of golden hour and how it just kind of covers everything with this beautiful, you know, warm light. So this spot is actually in a town called Cameron Park, where I lived. And uh, it's up on top of a hill. And behind me is a great big Catholic church and Catholic school. And I stumbled across this location one day as I was just driving around looking for spots to paint. And if you look slightly to the left of this, there's a, an incredible view of the Sacramento Valley. And you can see clear off, you can see rivers and you can see Mount Diablo, which is, you know, getting into the Bay Area. So there's a really, really great sort of vista from this point. And I would come up here lots to paint and I would, uh, you know, paint dozens and dozens of paintings and, and field sketches and stuff. And I, it was just such a great place. And I, I went back up there not long after this and it's all developed. And there's houses and neighborhoods. <laughs> I was I was pretty heartbroken, but uh, I was able to squeeze off some some photographs before all that development. So that that view is lost to people that are just trying to access and enjoy it. But there's so many great sunsets, and this was one that I captured, and I wanted to to put down. And as I draw, so as I'm going through this initial process of, of drawing, you know, as I kind of explained my process in the previous video with the four steps, um, I'm basically going through those steps. So there is a little bit of difference as far as my initial stage one, which I'll explain as I start putting I on, that. on the paper. Uh, but I'm really not only am I considering the design and the placement of all my major shapes, but I'm also sort of mentally preparing myself for painting and thinking about what it is I'm hoping to achieve with this. So I'm not surprising myself. Um, obviously there were things that drew me to the photograph and scene before I started drawing, but I'm kind of, as I'm moving my hand and thinking about the composition, I'm also considering things like, you know, the color, the focal point, some of these other things. And I'm really trying to consider what it is I'm really wanting to convey. And, you know, it really was what initially attracted me to this scene to begin with. And kind of comes back to this idea of editing and thinking about, you know, what stays, what goes, what needs changing for interest sake. And the, the image is fine. The photograph is fine, but I really want the painting to be its own thing that is informed by the photograph and it's not really beholden to it. And so, you know, just right off the bat, if you look at the foreground of the photograph, it's much too dark. Like if, if you were actually there, you, you would not see the, the horizontal plane as dark as it is. And so that's something that's going to change. I mentioned the brown, well, so-called golden hills of Northern California, which are brown and dead. Um, 
I did not want to paint them as this kind of bland gray that they appear in the photo. I did want to insert much more color into them. And you'll see, especially initially when I block in the color, that it is much more colorful and bright than what you think it should be. But, you know, eventually things kind of balance out color wise. And, you know, talking about in the previous lessons, how colors are relative to one another that the richness and the colorfulness of the sky is really what's going to take precedence. And the ground colors, those are all going to support the sky colors, but they're not going to be significantly um, downplayed, especially compared to the photo reference. So they will be dialed back relative to the sky color, but they will still have their own richness of color that isn't there in the, in the photograph. Um, and so I also really wanted to kind of put across this idea of space and distance that there are, you know, these, these varying distances, the foreground and then the midground, and then, you know, the distant hill, and then, you know, the sun setting beyond the horizon as well as the vastness of the sky. So these were all things that I was trying to consider and, and wanting to preserve throughout the painting. And so, you know, one of the design issues I was considering was this tree line, how it basically exists in a single row. And I don't normally love that um, just because it just feels everything is, is a little bit too predictable. You do like to have layers or overlapping just to show that depth and to show a little bit more than, than just a single row. With this, I, you know, I basically kept the line of trees um, because I, I did kind of want a strong horizon line in some form. Um, and I felt like, you know, like it worked. So, you know, just kind of relying on that intuitive, intuitive feel. So there's really not a whole lot to the drawing portion. The first thought when it came to color was this really interesting yellow glow around the sun. And this is a color that I generally do not use because personally, I, I don't love it. And that's like a really bright lemon yellow. And I don't see it a whole lot in the sunsets um, that I see, but I do remember it was a pretty intense yellow glow. And it had a lot of green to it. And like I said, I normally don't love that sort of biting acidic yellow. It's just too strong. And it just, I don't know, it reminds me of drinking pickle juice for some reason. Now, I don't drink pickle juice, but I imagine that that's how it would taste. And uh, I don't necessarily want that on my painting, but I thought I'd give it a try. So uh, I put the, <laughs> the pickle juice down first so that I'm relating everything to that because I wanted to keep the yellow bright and I wanted to keep it intense. Though you'll see as I continue working on this, there are you know, a lot of variations to that color, but in essence, the brightness and the hue of that color remains the same, even though there are varying amounts of intensity and some adjustments in terms of value, as well as the highlight centered in it. Um, but it did start with that yellow. And then just kind of relating everything to that. And, you know, that is such a big part of how I paint is relating one thing to another. And overall establishing this, this unity of colors while also staying true to reality. So, I, you know, one of the most important things when it comes to painting is that it has a sense of real light. And, you know, I... For me, it's it's too much to try to capture the light. Like that's a very difficult thing to try to do that, you know, conscientiously. And so I'm just trying to be smart with my color choices. So mixing one color compared to another color. And so starting with that yellow, what I'm trying to do is the flanking. This is like a, a peach, this orange peach band that extends across sort of that low horizon of the sky. And initially you'll see that some of the colors that I choose to use 
I feel like I'm yelling. Am I yelling? Um, feel a little bit downplayed, and then some of them feel like a bit overdone. So there, there is a narrowing of color. But for now, I really like sort of that warm peach glow that rests above the ground. It's a really nice, comforting sort of color. And so next, I'm going to paint above into the main sky color, which will be adjusted a few times. And so as I mentioned a little bit, I do this one a little bit different than my stage ones customarily because, you know, if this was a normal stage one, the sky might consist of maybe three colors. And then I would move on to another area, paint the gist of that in a single or two colors, and then move on. Basically, if you'll remember, you know, I would work an area, get a simple statement of color down, then move on to the next one and establish all those colors before I can then go in and break them up into sub colors in like a stage two or a stage three, which is a different, you know, more refined pass. So I'm putting this one down. It's a little bit too dark, but like I said, there will be adjustments. It's also too um, blue. So it's too intense. So the hue is off, the intensity is off, and the value is off. But it's better than white. <laughs> it's closer than white. So I'm putting it down. The white is adjusted. And then once everything else gets down, then it'll be even more apparent where that color needs to go. So if you put something down that's closer than white, that's a start. Unless you go in the complete opposite direction, that wouldn't be good. But you'll see I'm using I'm using two brushes with this because it is such a bigger um, format. So I'm using the one inch brush, and then I'm also using the the half inch. So with this, this is sort of my intermediate color between the sky and the peach low line sky, the warm portion near the horizon. This is going to go in between those two colors. So it's not really one um one or the other it's kind of no man's land but you know you can see it is closer to that peach and it will dry darker So I'm painting very broad, very big. I'm not even really concerned with, you know, super accurate shapes at this point. I just know that this is a, gen a general area where it needs to go and I'm putting the approximate color where that belongs. And then I'll tighten it up as I continue. But the main point is to get something close to color down, cover up the page, and then basically establish the color relationships right off the bat. And so this has a really strong sort of sunlight effect. It's not very subtle. It's, it's kind of, um, you know, it's, it's very bold, especially with that yellow, but I didn't want it to look artificial. So I wanted to push it as bold as it could be without it you know, assaulting your eyeballs. And there are a couple color notes that I put down that are way off that I have to 
sort of lift out, which happens. It's kind of filling in the little white spots. So yeah, again, the sky is going to take quite a bit of refinement. But the main thing is just getting the approximate colors down at this point. I'm not too fixated on, you know, I don't ever really want to get an area perfect and perfectly established so that it's, it's untouchable. Like I don't want to fuss with it and then move on to another place. Like I, I kind of want to get everything to a common stage and then go back, refine this and then refine that sort of bringing it all together rather than working it, you know, as independent segments that are pieced together. Like, you know, I guess it's like eating a, an entree or a, a dinner, right? Like you have a little bit of mashed potatoes and then a little bit of peas and then a little bit of meatloaf. And then you don't eat all your meatloaf. You don't eat all your peas. And then, I mean, some people do, and that works for them, but uh, you know, this approach is kind of working the entire thing at, at the same pace. So that's a lizard and crimson. I'm sort of lowering now closer to the ground and the color is changing more towards red. And this is, as the sun is setting, it's casting this really beautiful red over everything. And that, that mountain range is kind of hard to see in the photograph, but it is, it is, you know, really this beautiful purple, all sorts of violets between blue, blue violet and red violet, and then some even bright, bright reds. And so as it, as that light gets close to the, as the sky, the light in the sky gets close to the mountain range, it has this really nice sort of layer of red floating above it, this alizarin crimson. It's kind of like a pinkish um, violet. And so what I'll do as I get a little bit more directly into painting the hill, I'm not quite there yet, but. So out of that orange, I kind of worked my way up into this alizarin crimson, which is kind of like a neutral lowered value pink. And then I got this kind of grayish violet color. And this is going to be sort of like a low hanging haze, I guess you could say. There's like a haze above the mountains or above the hill, rather, that kind of lays across everything it, which is strange because it's it's this generally it's a very warm band of color that extends out from where the sun is setting but then below that it's like this very cool sort of purple striping so it's nice to see that um that contrast what some might say juxtaposition but i don't really like using that word so now with the hill, I'm putting down this blue, which looks much stronger than it is intensity wise. And so again, you'll notice I'm painting from back to front, just putting those things down so that I, I can kind of compare, you know, value wise, um, intensity wise and, and hue wise. And right now, looking at that sky, it looks kind of like, what is that? And how is that going to look like a sky? Because right now, in my mind, it's, it's pretty far off. Um, but it will, I promise. We'll get, we'll get there. So now, with the hill, um, what I'll do is, if I know that there's going to be sort of like a gradient happening, 
is I'll put, I'll establish my two main colors on either extreme. So in this case, it's like, you know, this rich blue violet. So that's going to be one side. And then the other side is this warmer red violet. So I have those two established and I know that I need to come up with colors between here and here. And so you can see on my, on my palette, I have them side by side. And looking at the palette, I can then mix a number of colors based on what I have there and then gradually work my way from this color to that color and from that color back into this. So you can see I'm kind of brushing that reddish color and that comes from the sun setting near the near the hill, it's basically filling it with this, this beautiful red, um, warm color. It's kind of saturating everything. <laughs> 